All right, today we're out in the garage and we need to build some car trailer ramps for my flatbed trailer. It never had any and we've got a trip coming up to go down and pick up a 1945 Willys Jeep and I need some ramps to be able to get that Jeep up on the trailer. So they're gonna be six feet long by 15 inches wide, two by two angle iron and it is 3 16 inch thick. So I need to get a bunch of pieces cut up for the crossbars and then we'll grind it, clean it up, and get it all welded together. Okay, so what we have here is six foot ramp. It's 15 inches wide. I put a little piece of flat stock here at the bottom. This is actually quarter inch. The rest of it's all 3 16. What I'm planning is I'll probably be angling this edge for interface with the ground. And so this will kind of brace the end right there where it touches the ground. And then uh, it looks like I've set my treads up every nine inches. And I think this looks pretty good. Uh, and then the last one here is going to be, it's going to have to be out like that. And that's what's going to actually hook onto the rub rail on the trailer. I think that's the plan. And now it's just a matter of squaring it up and welding it in. Okay, so we just had to take a little break. The Harbor Freight Flex Core Welder stopped welding, and I had to look into my modification where I converted it to a DC electrode negative from the AC. And it looks like I may have fried one of my diodes. So they give you an extra diode on these um, rectifiers. So I switched it over. Looks like it's welding good again. Put one on order, might have to go buy a real welder tomorrow. So let's continue welding and see how it goes. Okay, so the Harbor Freight welder died. So we went ahead and upgraded to uh, the Hobart just got back from town. This is kind of the cheapest uh, MIG welder you can get and I'm not going to be running it as MIG quite yet. I'll get a tank and regulator later on but for now I just want to run uh, continue running flux core through it and I need to get this project done because we have a road trip coming up and we're going to be picking up a, a 45 Willys Jeep and I need these car trailer ramps built for that flatbed trailer so this should be able to get us through and get this project finished. So let's take a look at what's inside the box when you buy the Hobart Handler 125. Ugh. 
Okay, so that's all, that's it. That's all that's in the box. And it looks like you got some instructions and some extra tips. So one thing I wasn't sure about in the store was what tips it was going to come with. So let's see what we got here. Uh, thirty thousand, two thirty thousands. So I went ahead and picked up some thirty-five thousands tips while I was in the store. I've got thirty and thirty-five flux core laying around, so you just never know what you're going to have to put in the machine. And the instructions. Okay, so looking inside, we've got our welding guide, and this is going to tell us what kind of material we're welding, what thickness, what wire we should be using. We've got our polarity for uh, the electrode, we've got our spool, wire feed. Okay, and looking around back, we can see we've got uh, our gas connection. So this is capable of doing MIG, but I don't have a tank or a regulator yet. I'll upgrade to that later. Uh, for right now, this project's mostly structural, so flux core works just fine. Um, doesn't really need to be that aesthetically pleasing. We've got our power cord. This is a 110 unit. It's a 20 amp unit. So I do have a dedicated 20 amp circuit in the garage for this welder and for all, all kinds of heavy duty stuff. You should always have a 20 amp circuit in your garage. Okay, and looking around front, we've got wire feed speed. We've got voltage adjustment, overheat indicator. It's a really basic front panel, a lot like the Harbor Freight unit. And so you can see where uh, this is just a cheaper overall unit. Uh, we've got a pretty cheap ground clamp, um, but again, it should work for what I'm doing. And just your standard run-of-the-mill uh, torch, and it does already have a tip fit in there, so those other tips were extra. So just a pretty standard run-of-the-mill MIG welder, and I think it's going to work perfect for the kind of metal work that I do. All right, let's go ahead and get him set up in his new home. Okay, and as you can see, we have a Harbor Freight welder tray here that I use to keep all my metalwork stuff on, some scrap metal. It does have a MIG tank uh, spot in the back, so that'll be great with this welder. I can add on a MIG tank. A little bit later on. Yeah, now I can. There it comes. Oh, I forgot to change the tip. Ah. Okay, I've got my settings set up for the material we're working on. And let's go ahead and put this dude to the test. Well, it's flux core, so there's not much to get excited about, but it does the job. It runs, uh, it seems like it's got a little more heat in it being a 125 amp welder as opposed to the Harbor Freight 90 amp welder, but uh, it does the job. So let's get these uh, trailer ramps finished up here. I got a few more welds on this one, and then we're gonna put the second one together.
right, so I'm looking at different options for putting uh, a rail on the back of the trailer for the car ramps to attach into. So I think what I'm going to do is this option, and I think it's going to go together pretty quick. So I just need to get the trailer down in the garage and start measuring, cutting, welding. We've got some more steel for this project. So let's go dig the trailer out of the snow. Eventually. Okay, so I got the inch and a half by quarter square tube mocked up and I'm going to be putting them there and there. Those will support one ramp and then we'll get the other ones in. So let's get these tacked on and then we'll put the other ones in. Okay, so I have my two inch flat stock mocked up here. So you can see I'm just gonna weld it right to those tubes right across there. And then we'll cut this end off when we're done. And then I think I might go back and patch in a little extra just to bridge that gap on the corner and make it look round all the way around, or make it look nice all the way around. So let's weld that dude on. So here's one downside of running flux core is all the splatter that you get in your tip and it's just kind of messy. All right, so they're all welded in. The only problem is this has still just got a little wiggle, especially if we put the ramp on there. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of flat stock and we're going to put it in there like that. And that'll brace that and take out that wiggle from that flat stock. I guess I could have made this entire thing out of angle and then put my uh, bracing in the angle. My only concern with that was uh, drainage, getting snow and water out of there. Uh, it's thick enough steel, it probably wouldn't have mattered. But, um, oh well, this is what we're doing. So we'll weld those in and I'm going to weld my little corner 
uh, tabs in to make that look nicer. Okay, so we got a test fit and it all looks good. One problem I'm seeing is, and I kind of anticipated this, but these are binding up. And so I want to just trim off the corner of that. Another thing I did on the bottom is I used a piece of flat stock. And what I wanted to do was trim this down so that that would lay closer to the ground and there wouldn't be such a big jump up. So let's go ahead and cut all those corners and see what we got. Okay, well, there we go. We trimmed off the edges and now they're sitting nice and flush and they've got a nice approach angle. Now we've got lots of clearance here and they're not binding. So that's it for building them. Now it's just time to throw a little bit of paint on and then we're ready to use them. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. We got our car ramps built, painted, and ready to go pick up the Jeep. Give me a like and a subscribe if you like this project, and you can follow along with the recovery of the Jeep and bringing it back to Idaho. So we'll see you next time.